This is CNN Breaking News. Welcome back, everyone. We are covering this hearing in Washington. You are looking right now at General Keith Alexander. He is the chief of the NSA. He is answering questions about the surveillance program right now and also questions about Edward Snowden. He is the contractor who leaked so much of the information that we're now discussing nearly every minute of every day. Let's listen. We are working through our system. Uh, Director Clapper has asked us to do that and providing that feedback to the rest of the community. Okay, thank you. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you all for being here and, and for making some additional information available to the public. I know it's frustrating for you as it is for us to have these targeted narrow leaks and not be able to talk about uh, the bigger picture. General Alexander, um, what you mentioned that you're going to send us tomorrow 50 cases that have been stopped because of these programs, basically. Four have been made public to this point, and I think there are two new ones that you are talking about today. But I would invite you to explain to us both of those two new cases, um, Moelan and the Operation Wi-Fi case. And, and, and one of them starts with a 215, one of them starts with a 702. And so I think it's important for you to provide the information about how these programs stopped those terrorist attacks. Okay, uh, I'm going to defer this because the actual guys who actually do all the work when we provide it is the FBI and get it exactly right. I'm going to have Sean do that. Go ahead, Sean. So, Congressman, as I mentioned previously, NSA on the op Wi-Fi, which is Khalid Uazani out of Kansas City, that was the example that I had referred to earlier. NSA utilizing 702 authority identified a extremist located in Yemen. This extremist located in Yemen was talking with an individual located inside the United States in Kansas City, Missouri. That individual was identified as Khalid Uazani. The FBI immediately served legal process to fully identify Uazani. We went up on electronic surveillance and identified his co-conspirators. And this was the plot that was in the very initial stages of plotting to bomb the New York Stock Exchange. We were able to disrupt the plot. We were able to lure some individuals to the United States, and we were able to affect their arrest. And they were convicted for this terrorist activity. Okay, just, just so I on, – on, on that plot, it was under the 702, which is targeted against foreigners – uh, that some communication from this person in Yemen back to the United States was picked up, and then they turned it over to you, the FBI, to serve legal process on this person in the United States. That, that is absolutely correct. And if you recall, under 702, it has to be a non-U.S. person outside the United States, and then also one of the criteria is linked to terrorism. Okay. Would you say that this uh, – there – intention to blow up the New York Stock Exchange was a serious plot? Or is this something that they kind of dreamed about, you know, talking among their buddies? I think the jury considered it serious since they were all convicted. Okay. And, and what about the other plot, uh, October 2007, that started, I think, with a 215? I, I refer to that uh, plot. It was an investigation after 9-11 that the FBI conducted. We conducted that investigation and did not find any connection to terrorist activity. Several years later, under the 215 business record provision, the NSA provided us a telephone number only in San Diego that had indirect contact with an extremist outside the United States. We served legal process to identify who was the subscriber to this telephone number. We identified that individual. We were able to, under further investigation and electronic surveillance that we applied specifically uh, for this U.S. person with the FISA court, we were able to identify co-conspirators, and we were able to uh, disrupt this terrorist activity. I'm sorry. Repeat for me again what they were plotting to do. It was actually he was providing financial support to an overseas terrorist group that was a designated terrorist group by the United States. 
Um, but there was some connection to suicide bombings that they were talking about, correct? If not in the example that I'm citing right here. Oh, I'm sorry, the group in Somalia to which he was financing, that's what they do, that's what, what they do, do in Somalia, correct? That is correct. And as you know, uh, as part of our classified hearings regarding the American presence in, in that area of the world. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. You well, if I could, uh, uh, Congressman, just, just hit a couple key points. It's over 50 cases. And the reason I'm not giving a specific number is we want the rest of the community to actually beat those up and make sure that everything we have there is exactly right. I'd give you the number 50X. But if somebody says, well, not this one, actually what we're finding out is there are more. They said you missed these three or four. So those are being added to the packet. On the top of that packet, we'll have a summary of all of these, the listing of those. I believe those numbers are things that we can make public, that you can use, that we can use. And we'll try to give you the numbers that apply to Europe as well, as well as those that had a nexus in the United States. The issue in terms of releasing more on the specific overseas cases is that our, it's our concern that in some of those now going into further details of exactly what we did and how we did it, may prevent us from disrupting a future plot. So that's something that's work in progress. Our intent is to get that to the committee tomorrow for both, both intel committees for the Senate and the House.